welcome. Uh, we're just waiting for a few more people to join us this evening. But um, welcome. Hi, everyone. Hi from London, everyone. Um, where's everyone from? There's a chat function if you want to let us know where you're dialing in from today. I guess people are probably dialing in, but you know what I mean? Hmm. Oh, North London. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this one from Paris. Clapping, like, still been clapping. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Um, it's just about nighttime here in London. My name is Louisa Ulliet, and I'm curator of talks and events at the Photographer's Gallery. We're delighted to be here with artist Vasantha Yoganathan. Uh, Vasantha's latest body of work, AMA, is currently being exhibited at the Photographer's Gallery. AMA is the final chapter of a project that first began in 2013. It is a modern retelling of the legendary Princess Sita and her journey from Sri Lanka. The exhibition at the Photographer's Gallery is open until the 7th of February, and it's not only an opportunity to see these stunning works in person, but to also see Vasantha's process firsthand, which combines photography, colored and black and white, and some hand painted elements too. This talk also celebrates Vasantha's recent entry into the Victorian Albert Museum's collection. Joining us this evening are BNA curators, Hannah Kaluznik and Divya Patel, both of whom were instrumental in the acquisition of the significant body of work from our print sales team at the Photographer's Gallery. Thank you in advance for your work on this evening's event. After the presentation and discussion with Vasantha, we will move to comments from you. You can submit your questions using the chat function here, or they can be posed directly uh, by electronically raising your hand using the Zoom function, and we will then ask you to unmute yourself. This event should last roughly one hour in total. And please note, we are recording this. We are, we are approaching tonight's event in the same way we do all of our public programs, which is with the aim of creating a form of trust and mutual respect, so please keep that in mind. Before we start, I would like to thank this evening's speakers, um, to my colleagues, Gemma Bartnett and the rest of the Prince Sales team, and lastly, to you all. We hope you'll join us again at some of our other forthcoming online activities in the new year, and even more hopefully in person in the gallery again soon. So thank you for joining us, and now to tonight's speakers. Hello, um, welcome to everyone. Um, so I'm going to give you just a brief overview of um, the body of work that we're talking about. So The Myth of Two Souls is a photography project that started in 2013 and won't actually be finished until next year. Um, it's a journey inspired by India's epic poem, the Ramayan, written in Sanskrit between 500 and 100 BCE by the sage Valmiki. And it's one of the most important texts of ancient India and of Hinduism. And it consists of seven books which tell the story of the god Rama. And um, while we'll go through the narrative, uh, perhaps the things to look out for are in the story. Uh, you know, this is the god Rama. We talk about his early life, his marriage to Sita, how he rules the kingdom of Ayodhya, his exile for 14 years, the abduction of Sita, and her eventual rescue. So these are things that we'll talk about as we go through the series. Now, the um, Ramayana is hugely popular throughout India. Um, it's recited and read um, across India. It's made into a television series, film, dance performances, puppet shows, theater productions. And it's perhaps the universal themes of good triumphing over evil, loyalty, duty, and honor. Um, these these universal themes and values that make it so popular. And what you have on the screen here are the many visual representations of the Ramayana that, um, that come from across India. So you have everything from the, the scroll painting on the um, left-hand side to um, 
courtly fine art painting through to um, the film poster and through comic representations. And it gives you some background to where we are going to with Vasantha's work because his visualization is a very contemporary observation of the engagement of this epic um, myth into everyday life. We go to the next slide, sorry. So this year the VA acquired a set of 10 prints from the series. Um, and this was made possible by the VA's photography acquisition group. And a happy coincidence um, that it came together. It was while I was lecturing on the subject of photography in India. Um, it, the, my lecture was attended by Susan Molman, who's part of our acquisition group. She was instrumental in bringing us all together to talk about Vasantha's work and the, and the acquisition um, really uh, took place uh, through all of these conversations. And it's that conversation that we had through the acquisition process that will be the backbone of the conversation that we're having today. And what you see on the screen are those prints on the table and against the wall. It's just to give you some sense of the scale because it's not something that you get when you look at just slides and images on a, on a screen. Now, I skipped ahead two slides. I think Vasantha is going to talk about the two slides of, uh, of the books that you saw. So I'll hand over to Vasantha and then to Hannah. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for being here tonight. Um, well, Divya, your introduction was really, uh, really great. I think like that for me, the Ramayana was, uh, it, it became very important because I remember when I first um, traveled to India back in 2013, um, I was traveling to India and I knew that I wanted to do a project there, but I didn't really know, um, I did, didn't really know what to do at the time. And I was traveling to India and I had many books with me and I was reading the Ramayana and in the streets, uh, in the rickshaws, uh, in a candy shop, in a restaurant, in a museum, in a temple, everywhere. Um, I soon start noticing pictures from the Ramayana. Um, and, and from there, from this observation in, in the daily life uh, of, of Indians, um, I realized that, that the story was, was very much um, important for them and that it was um, most importantly that it was still uh, a living uh, text, you know, it was not an old uh, story that someone had to, to dig into like a library or bookshops to, to, to see an old book, like it was there everywhere. Um, youngster were, were telling me about video games, about the Ramayana. So very soon I had like this intuition that perhaps this was a, an interesting story um, to, to study. Um, and, and then from then on, like, uh, I realized that like there was many different versions uh, of the Ramayana. Uh, one of the most famous one is, of course, the TV series that they, they did about it in the 80s, uh, or the comic books uh, about the Ramayana. But strangely, uh, no photographers uh, did it as a photographic retelling and, and from there like uh, started the, the kind of crazy idea of uh, doing my own uh, epic uh, retelling of the story. So Vicente, I'm wondering, as the project has always been envisioned in book form, you know, you've put so much time into creating beautiful books that are um, so, you know, impeccably designed and have such a focus on creative writing and sequencing. And I'm wondering, you know, how this has evolved over the years. And um, yeah. Well, it's been the greatest challenge for us. Um, Chose Commune, I co-founded the publishing house uh, with Cecile Poimbeuf Koizumi back in 2014. Um, we operate from France. Um, and I remember back at, the, back at the beginning of the project, we had like two options. Um, one was to wait until the project was over and to do one big book. And the other option was to do um, a seven book series, uh, each chapter being published um, as a book. And because the Ramayana is uh, the cycle of life and it starts uh, from the childhood to eventually like the, the death of Rama and Sita, uh, each book 
was to be very different in content, design, uh, layout, uh, the relationship between text and pictures as well. Um, and, and we decided to have only one element that would remain the same uh, in the series, which is the book format. Um, but apart from the format, each book uh, is meant to be completely independent and, and different from the previous one. Thank you. Um, so now we'll start talking uh, about your photographs. And this is in fact the beautifully designed book format, uh, which Hannah's going to come back to. But um, I was going to, so this is the, the, the first of the V&A acquisitions. Um, and Pasantha, I was going to ask you to set the scene with this image. It's set in the city of Ayodhya, which is Ayodhya, which is the birthplace of Rama. Um, and I know that when we were talking, you wanted the v &A collection to bring out a sense of place, to cover the geographic range of the narrative, which goes from ne Nepal to India to Sri Lanka. So, you know, could you sort of expand on that? And, and in fact, you know, Ayodhya is very significant today as well. So it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts on, on that yeah. too. Yeah, of course. Well, the, 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 the geography is very important to the project, mainly because like, where did I take the pictures? I did take them in places that are still uh, connected to the story, meaning that if you uh, read, uh, read the Ramayana, you can like flag the cities in the book and you can find most of them uh, on the map today in India, Nepal and Sri Lanka. And, and because you can do that, uh, people go to these places and it was, uh, it, it was for me like a, a turning point when I started the project because going to Ayodhya first and I remember going to Tamil Nadu uh, at the very uh, southern tip of India where, where we can see it on the map there. Um, I remember in Tamil Nadu visiting uh, a beach uh, called Rameshwaram and it's from that location that they crossed the sea to go over Sri Lanka. Um, and on the beach, it's, it's a deserted beach. Only a few fishermen are walking. Um, yet, I was meeting with people coming from all over India, coming from two, three, four days uh, train journey uh, because they wanted to see for themselves um, what Rameshwaram looked like. Um, and I realized that Although the, the, the text is a fiction, of course, it's, it's, a, it's a poetic uh, fiction uh, that for Indians, uh, it is linked to, to places in, in the country they live in. And I think it's very much part of why the, the, the story is important uh, today because they can visit places and they can yeah. relate to buildings, uh, landscapes, people that they will meet um, in real life. So they so, go to these places as pilgrimages, don't they? It's very much a sort of pilgrimage site. Yes, um, yes, they, they do pilgrimage, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they would go there to visit a temple, you know, like, no, because, no, no. for example, Rameshwaram, there is just the landscape to see, and the landscape is quite uh, deceptive in, in, in the sense that there is not much to see. Sure. Yeah, and it's not looking at this, you know, immense distance that you've traveled. I'm reminded a little bit of, you know, the practice of photographically documenting a journey and the, you know, that long tradition within the many histories of photography. Um, I thought of this photograph from the 1850s um, by Roger Fenton of his, you know, photographic van filled with all of the equipment. And I think there's a really, powerful and important connection here between the epic Ramayana and your epic journey and how this sort of relates to the wider context and history of photography. So I'm wondering, you know, how did you go about organizing such a, you know, such a trip and um, yeah, how did you coordinate all of this? Well, I think I have to, to to thank the, the internet, you know, like it's, it's been really a crazy uh, approach to, to storytelling in, in the sense that today, if you go to TripAdvisor or to some blogs, you can like find almost anything about any place uh, in India. 
from the, the, the smallest village in Bihar in the jungle to the biggest uh, cities in India, of course. Um, and I remember when I started the project, like I was traveling from state to state and each travel would last for like a month. Um, and and the, 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 the way I did plan the, the, the trip was really to reading blogs uh, by Indian travelers, you know, and, and they would retell like the way they, they traveled to Uttar Pradesh looking for the traces of Rama and Sita, for example, you know, and crisscrossing many blogs uh, old books, um, TV series, uh, different elements. I would do my own, um, my own journey, my own itinerary. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank goodness for the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is a, um, a rather stunning photograph. It's called Young Warriors and it's, uh, Rama and Lakshman, two brothers, um, they are um, inseparable in life. So they have a great loyalty to each other. And they're teenagers here. Rama will eventually go on to rule the kingdom of Ayodhya. And what's um, interesting here is you've kind of named, you know, named them um, one soul, two bodies. And in the photograph, they, they, they're sort of together, but they're apart. They have a quite an appreh apprehensive um, look about them. Could you talk a little bit about how you made, you know, how you orchestrated this photograph and, and, and how you, you know, you stage some photographs, you don't stage others. And um, how did this process begin? Yeah, well, I think that the, um, I think we'll we'll speak about it uh, further in, 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 in as the well. Talk, yes. But but like the the large format practice, I work I did work mainly with a large format camera for the project, um, meaning that you have to use a tripod, um, and because it's so expensive, you also have to be very careful um, when you will when when you when you take a photograph um, and i think that the, the the large format camera makes you work m almost more as as a director you know as a film director rather than a photographer in the sense that you have complete uh, control over the landscape you will picture and and the way uh, people will play uh, we will act within uh, the landscape uh, and, and discovering the large format uh, camera was uh, instrumental um, in, in, in the project. And, and the reason why I did start the staged uh, photograph, uh, the first two trips were mainly um, documentary. When I said documentary, I mean by that, that I was shooting uh, everyday life scenes uh, in the streets, in homes, in, in, in the countryside, but I was not interfering um, with what was in front of me. Um, and after two or three trips to India, when we were, when we were working on, on book number one, uh, we realized that like we were lacking so many uh, key pictures and key um, elements from the story. And this made me think that, okay, I need to stage uh, photographs with the locals uh, in order to bring some up some some drama in, into the story as well. Yeah, and that's so interesting. I mean, I've I've heard you say in previous interviews too that you the way that people engage with the medium format camera is really fun and exciting. That your subject sometimes will perform almost. And I'm wondering if you could tell us like a bit more about. Um, your relationship to the tools that you use, you know, me large format isn't the only type of um, camera that you use, you know, Polaroid presents itself, 35 millimeter, medium format. So does this, does your choice of camera, you know, inform the narrative in any specific way? Yes, uh, very much so, uh, because we wanted to have like uh, an arc like a, a kind of dramatic uh, acceleration um, in the narrative in the story and it starts indeed with uh, most pictures taken with the large format camera and most of these pictures 
um, could be described as uh, quiet, you know, like there is, uh, mm -hmm. like you can feel time passing into the pictures. Um, and in the last book, we will speak briefly about the, the, the last book we just published. Um, I did shoot with a 35 uh, millimeter camera, very small camera. And I think that might be a bit strange to say that, but for me, photography sometimes is like a sport and the camera you're using uh, makes you, makes your body, like the relationship your body has with the landscape and the people is completely different regarding the camera you're using. And it's, it's, it's quite interesting for me to try and go outside of my comfort zone by changing cameras and, and changing technical, um, yeah, technical tools. Mm -hmm. Although at the end, like, I don't really care, like, if someone did, like, pictures with an iPhone or large format camera or digital camera, but I think that the technical side of it makes you take different pictures in the end. Yeah, certainly, you know, it, um, you perform with the camera just as much yeah. as the people yeah. on the other side, yeah. So um, the next image we're looking at is called Lovebird. And it is a rather curious photograph of a caged parrot with a sheet behind it with these colored pegs. And it's, it's quirky. Um, can you, there are certain symbolisms that the, in, the Indian parrot has within Indian miniature painting, for example. So it often, re often represents the absent male lover or it, can be, it's often the storyteller or the narrator, but can you tell me how this fits into your narrative? Well, you know, Divya, it's, it's hard for me to try to, to explain what's behind the pictures because I think that a key element of the project um, was to leave uh, room for the people to interpret the pictures. So I'm always uh, worried to kind of decipher um, yeah. what's behind the pictures but of course it's linked to the wedding of, of Rama and Sita because usually you see parrots uh, during weddings um, but especially the picture was um, was also a, a turning point in, in the, the project itself like the making of, of the project because it's the first uh, still life um, I did orchestrate myself um, mm -hmm. And I remember we, we, we were walking in a village and we met a man and he had many parrots. Um, and, and, but the man where he was sitting, like the, like the light was not really good and the landscape was not really interesting. And we did uh, took some of the parrots with us and start walking on all the homes, you know, in like maybe 15, 20 homes in the village until we found like the perfect backdrop um, and I remember we perhaps, you know, took like half a day to take the picture. And I think that perhaps because like it's, it's quite constructed, perhaps it has uh, a mystery in it. Mm. Yeah. And it, it's also sort of in some ways can, makes sense to come at the end of the chapter when you're talking about um, Sita as a caged, yeah. uh, you know, her confinement. Um, and, and it kind of represents her in that narrative as well. So I suppose it can be read at many different levels, can't it? Yes, it's, 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 exactly. It's, 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 it's uh, yeah, very engaging. Okay. So two more rather mm -hmm. uh, amazing images. Mm -hmm. And um, in terms of the, 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 the boy playing girl on the left-hand side, um, it's what I wanted to hear from you was, um, you know, a, a, it's set in um, Janakpur, which is where Sita, it's her birthplace, but yes. it's taken um, during a particular festival and there's a certain staging to it. And I think here you're going to talk a little bit more about sort of semi-staged process. Um, but all, both of these photographs that you see here, Rama combing his hair, boy playing girl are pivotal to, to your um, you said for you in, 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 in how the narrative moved forward. So it would be lovely to, for you to put those into context. 
Yeah, of course. A boy playing girl was taken in, in Janakpur, Nepal. So Janakpur is, um, people believe it's Sita's birthplace. Um, and once a year, there is a big festival uh, celebrating the wedding of Rama and Sita. Uh, Janakpur is a very small town and only for a week uh, does it become coded with thousands and thousands of, 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 of people coming for the festival. Um, in, in northern India, uh, as in Nepal, um, girls are still forbidden to, um, to play in theaters, uh, out, like outside yeah. theaters. Um, so young boys, uh, young adults uh, and men would uh, dress as girl or woman. Um, so this young boy is playing a friend of Sita. Um, and he was about to go on stage and I remember seeing, like, seeing him like on the stairs and rushing with my assistant, and we had to set the large format, which is like <laughs> rather like long process. Um, and we had only five minutes uh, to take the shot. Um, and as he was waiting, the boy, um, he, he, he did like unlift his veil, um, mm. and it was so perfect. I remember like. <laughs> like seeing him doing it, missing the shot, you know, and I just asked him to do it again. Um, and the boy we see on the, on the right side of the screen, Rama combing his hair, um, it's, it's somehow connected in the way like the picture happened. Um, it was taken in Ayodhya as well, um, Rama's birthplace. Um, and we were going to, to uh, one of the school, one of the school in Ayodhya every day. Every morning, this boy, was particularly um, worried about how his hair uh, would look like, you know? So he would like spend like maybe 30 minutes uh, combing his hair every morning in his room. The room was super dark. Uh, there, was, there was no natural light. Um, and after a week uh, going and spending time with the kids every day, we, I had the idea of doing a picture of him combing his hair and, and we went on the, the rooftop of the school. Um, so in, in, in one hand, it's completely staged. I did pick the location, the time, the light, where I would put him, but, but the, dress, the, the gesture and, and the, the way he's doing it is completely natural. Mm. Uh, and, and I think that the most successful pictures in the project uh, when we were, when you were referring to that semi-stage yeah, uh, yeah. zone, like it, it happens because the people have the control of how they will perform for the camera. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. Um, uh, Rama combing his hair is such a um, sort of immediate photo, if you know what I mean. It sort of yeah. takes you straight there into into his world, him combing his hair. You almost feel sort of you're intruding on him. Yeah. Um, and, and I think and now I'd quite like to, looking at boy playing girl, it is um, a black and white photograph that has been colored. And I'd quite like to talk about the painting process that you've used in many of these images. They're, they're quite stunning. And I just want to first look at the, the next slide, which is, um, of two historic uh, painted photographs in the v &A collection, um, just to show that there is a sort of tradition of hand painting photographs in India, which is um, where, you know, the background photograph is almost completely covered over. So you don't see any trace of the photograph. It's quite a thick um, coating of paint. So that there's almost a sort of hyper reality to these because you have photograph underneath and then you have this painted surface um, across the top. And that's very typical of Indian painted photographs. Now, what you have is a very different um, application of paint. And the artist that you work with, I believe is based in, in, in New Delhi and um, his name is Jay, Jai Kumar Shankar. And it would be lovely to hear about the process of working with him. You know, how, did, how do you choose which photographs get painted? What is your relationship with um, Jai Kumar and, and, and you know, how does, how organic is it? How, how does it work? Yeah. Um, so we met in 2016, five years ago in New Delhi. 
Um, mm -hmm. He comes from a family of painters. His grandmother was a painter. His mother was a painter. So as, as usually in India, you know, it's a family tradition. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, he, he did run out of work, you know, because of uh, digital and, and no one uses uh, hand painters uh, anymore. Um, and, and I remember when we met the first prince uh, he did for me like they were quite classical. Uh, by classical, I mean like the, the color palette he was using, you know, was um, perhaps a bit too too nostalgic uh, for me. You know, like it, it was really grounded in, in that hand painting uh, Indian tradition. But the more our relationship, like our relationship, um, grew uh, mm -hmm. over the years, the, the more free. Uh, he became in his uh, in his practice, um, and and he has complete carte blanche. Of course, he's not traveling with me, uh, so he never he has no idea of uh, the, the color of the clothes people are wearing. Uh, and for example, the boy playing girl picture, like the colors are completely different from those of of the reality. <laughs> you know? um, and actually, when you see uh, the the boy the boy playing girl picture with the real colors. Uh, it's it's uh, it's less stronger. It's like yeah. the, the 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 addition of of Jay Kumar's uh, palette and intuition in in the way he uses uh, light and 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 contrast and, and and colors really brings something completely new to the picture for me. Um, it, it's not only about putting nice color for the sake of putting nice color. For me, I think it completely transform the way we read the photograph mm, mm. and and yeah he's been he's been doing uh, yeah he's been taking more and more liberties uh, as, <laughs> in, in, in as your relationship has yes. grown and you've become yeah. he's become more confident to do that yeah. I'm, and, I'm struck by the by the tree in in this photograph and how it just sticks <laughs> from the background yeah, the, the fake tree is doing the photograph indeed yeah yeah um in so in this photograph this is rama the night before his wedding and um he doesn't look completely happy um he's obviously thinking about something um what is what is he thinking about do you know <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure i know but i remember like we were like visiting the, 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 the rooftop uh, of the palace uh, very often because uh, young people would go up there to do selfies um, during the festival. Um, and it was uh, a kind of very uh, beautiful moment to see this man standing alone thinking, and I don't know what he's thinking of. Uh, and I think this is what I like about, about the picture as well. Yeah, and, and two, you know, as it's the night before, his wedding, you know, when you think of Indian weddings, you know, a, a very certain yeah. specific trope kind of comes to mind. And could you tell us about how you tried to avoid that type of kitsch or, you know, things like Bollywood in your photographs? Yeah, well, I tried to avoid picturing temples and, and festivals, you know, like I think that only in book number two, because it's the wedding book, um, I had to show a temple uh, and I had to show a festival, uh, which I did. So only in book two, um, do you see uh, perhaps something that's expected from uh, what India looks like, you know, like, I mean, when we think of India, we, we have many pictures uh, coming, you know, imaginary. And, and this is, yeah, this is, of course, a part of it. Yeah. Right. And then in this slide, so this is um, from your, from the book, uh, The Promise. And the photograph on the right, the secret door, you've said is one of your favorite photographs. And I was wondering if you could tell us why that is. <laughs> Um, you laugh. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, I think it's it's one of my favorite photographs because I don't, I can't really point out why. After like I did, I did do the photograph five years ago, and I can't really 
understand why I, I like it, you know. And, and some photograph, uh, as Divya was pointing out, for example, the Rama combing his hair photograph, you know, it's very, it's so immediate. Um, when you look uh, at your contact sheets, uh, when you come back from, from traveling to India, some photograph, uh, immediately you notice that it's a very strong picture, you know, like it's like the picture is there. And some other photographs, they have... Uh, perhaps uh, an ambiguity or certain quality to them that is uh, a bit more mysterious. Uh, and Secret Door is, is, um, is that kind of picture for me. Yeah. Uh, because it, it, like it brings to mind uh, departure, it brings to mind uh, what's, what's behind uh, the veil and what's behind the door. And, and it's about surface and appearance and, and colors as well the colors are quite important in the picture yeah which which i think you know it's this is also a moment to think about you know the very purposeful sequencing in your books and um you know how they complement each other in this example so well and i'm i'm wondering if you know when you look at your photographs in books it offers such a different experience than when you see them in the gallery um, it's obviously much more yeah. private and sort of your own journey in a different way than walking through a gallery space. And I'm wondering if you wish audiences to engage with, you know, a selection, a curated selection in a gallery in a different way than they would in um, in the book. Yeah, I think the two experiences are completely different. Different. Uh, I mean, as, as you were mentioning like the physical experience is so different with a book you I mean most of us when we're looking at a book we in in the comfort of our home you know and you can read it and you can come back at it like the next day or the next month or the next year and I think this this element of time in is very is, is what makes the photo book medium uh, so strong for me like it's 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 the biggest difference uh, with the exhibition uh, is that like when you build like let's say 45 or 50 pictures um editing and sequencing in a book you do hope that the reader will like to revisit the book you know and 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 see perhaps different connections uh, and read the pictures differently um as as you're going uh, as a person uh, as an artist uh, as an art lover uh, whereas I think the the exhibition experience is is perhaps could be stronger you know because it's like you you have the the, the chance to see the, the real quality prints uh, and I think that the book medium is is always the I mean when we are the printer it's always like very hard for me because you have the real print and you have the book printed next to the real print. And obviously you can't achieve the same quality of printing. Um, so I think both experiences, of course, have their, their pros and cons. Absolutely. So now we're gonna talk about one of our favorite images. Indeed, the, the crossing, certainly one of my favorites. And this is a, a large scale print, isn't it? Yeah. So it's over a, a meter in, in length at least. And what strikes me, you know, about this image, A, it's a sort of desolate looking landscape, but the light is phenomenal. And in terms of the narrative, it's a pivotal point in the narrative, isn't it? When um, Rama, Lakshman and Sita leave are exiled and they leave their, their um, leave Iodia and go off into exile. So this is the, their rather lonely journey into yeah. isolation yeah. to an unknown place. Can you talk a little bit about your use of light and these ethereal colors that are coming in here? Because a lot of your landscapes, you know, um, things like Rothko Lake and Southern Lights and all of these large landscapes do have this particular lighting in them. And I'd, I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. Yeah, um, the, the, the light and, 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 and the color approach was uh, particularly important for the, for the landscape pictures um, part of the project. Um, I did decide to travel to India mostly in the in the winter and in North India in the winter it's um, it's quite cold and and the fog uh, the fog has a very um, like almost uh, 
godly quality to it in the sense that it's you can't really see far but it's so luminous and so bright it's it's completely different uh, from the fog we have in europe or you have in the uk or <laughs> people have in portugal um and and when you look at the fog for a long time you can see many color within the fog and and when i realized that i think i I decided to come back every winter, uh, which I did for three or four years, um, to did the landscape part of the project. And I would always uh, scoot location with my assistant the day prior to the shoot. And then we would like reach the spot before sunrise and to generally like try to get the shot just before sunrise. So it's not, you don't get that cheesy light that you get when you shoot an actual sunrise, but like it's warm and cold at the same time. And yeah, the light has, has a very particular quality to it. Um, and this picture was taken during, during one of the most, um, the hardest trip I think of the project in Bihar. Um, mm -hmm. Bihar is uh, at the north of India. It's uh, it's a very poor state, uh, very corrupted. It's it's um, it's really hard to to travel to Bihar also because it's very polluted, and most of the the landscape I was uh, I, I was looking at like they were already completely destructed by by pollution, you know. Um, but I've, traveling there for four or five weeks, I remember that particular morning you could see sheer beauty, you know, like for once, like there was no, there was no pollution and there was just like the landscape and, and people crossing the river, you know, and, and I think it's the only time like in five weeks that I, like that I witnessed uh, such a scene. Wow. And it's very um, painterly, um, yeah. you know, in, 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 in its, um, outlook and also in its texture isn't it and um, I'm wondering whether you're influenced by any any particular landscape painters at all in the way in the outlook of these photographs yeah well I look when I look at the pictures I look at myself in the in the Tate room you know looking at turners uh, watercolors or oil oil paintings for sure uh, I mean, Turner was a big influence uh, when I was younger. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm still young, but yeah, I was. Uh, I did look at many painters, and, and Turner was quite influential. Oh, fantastic! Gosh, so I think we're moving on to another pretty um, an image that I think has become a very popular image from your series, um, which is Marchese's magic trick, and it's. Um, Marchesa is a, a demon who's about to turn himself into a golden deer so that he can lure, lure Sita away from Rama. Um, I think you, you, you told me that there was quite a long waiting process involved mm -hmm. in this, yeah. capturing this image. Um, so if you could tell us a little bit about that. I also wanted to just mention the um, comic book images on the right-hand side, which are very typical of the comic books that I read as a child. I'm not. I think that you 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 said you also read them. They come yeah. from Amachitra Shala, which, if anyone who knows any anything about Indian comics, will know that this is sort of they're the, the key things to read when you're younger. And it's giving you the same scene um, as you have depicted in your uh, image. So, if you could tell us a little bit about how you got that image. Yeah. Um... I think many, many of the, the strongest pictures in the project, they are a mix of uh, planification and chance, uh, meaning that I knew that I wanted a picture of a man that would like act as Maricha and that man had to be hiding his face in order to convey the, the transformation like uh, ID. Um, and I, when, when, I, when I was traveling to India many times, I only had like a kind of idea of the emotion or the scene I wanted to take, but I had no idea what the good backdrop would be or what the good character would be to, to, to achieve the picture. And when we, 
when we saw the backdoor uh, that metallic uh, back, backdoor with my assistant we i immediately immediately think like okay it's the marriage type picture it's there it's the perfect <laughs> backdoor um, and we were on the side of the road and i mean the good thing about india is that you always meet so many people in the streets. So like for the, the making of the pictures, you know, you can like go and speak to people and, and convince someone to, to do something. Um, but we ended up waiting for three hours at the same spot. No one, <laughs> no, no one coming. And the light slowly, slowly, you know, oh, declining gosh. over the day. Um, and finally a man comes and the man has the perfect dhoti. Uh, the dhoti is the, um, I mean, the dress he's wearing, like as the, the men do in, in Southern India. Um, and yeah, it just stands in front of the, uh, of the backdrop and like everything was perfect, you know, like, I mean, his, his clothes like were meant to be there yes. along with the backdrop and then like, the, the way Jay Kuma painted the pink to, the, the, the print uh, adds to the mystery, uh, of course. Yeah, I think that combination of the, the, the coming together of all of these things and then the last thing being Jay Kumar's yeah. painting just really, um, you know, really brings it together. And it's and the dhoti being just the right stripes and the right plaids, you know, it, was, it, it really works very, very well. Yeah, and in, in reality, you know, like I remember the, 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 the metallic store, you know, like the, the strips in the inside, Jekuma has painted the strips in blue. Um, and in, in reality, like all the strips have the same color. Um, right. So it's again a good example, you know, like in the picture, the fact that the strips are changing colors, you know, like it really add, adds like kind of depth to the, to the reading of the picture as well. No, it does. It does. Certainly. And you know, I've been wondering how you approach um, the people that you photograph. And, you know, I think in Emma, there's a very similar image. And it made me wonder, you know, traveling 3,500 miles and going, you know, visiting India so many times, did you ever go back and photograph the same people or um, in this image as well? You know, they really they seem like they know each other but did, did they or <laughs> yeah they do, they do they are a couple um i i never photographed uh, the same people i think the idea of of the road trip was very important to the project the idea of following Rama's and sita's footstep and not going back to the same places and always moving forward um which i think was quite important when I was speaking about trends, you know, like that if you don't get the shot, you're never going to get it, you know, because you're never going to come back. Um, and that picture was very important because it's very rare, like in, in the countryside in India to convince young couples uh, to agree for a photograph. It's something that's still very hard to do. Like it's, all, of course, it's harder to photograph women. Uh, as a foreigner, as a man, um, and it's and it's also hard to photograph couples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and these two young people are not yet married, uh, and they accept like they, they did tell me, okay, we can do the photograph, but we can do it like very quickly. And we had like as for the boy playing girl picture, like it did happen in. Yeah. yeah five minutes you know and it's a miracle that it's there because like we had so little time to do it <laughs> yeah. so I, I think we're being asked to um, move to questions yes um so we've got quite a few more images but i think maybe move to the questions and and then go back to the images if if um sure. yeah sure. is that okay louisa um yeah that sounds good um i just wanted to we had a few questions from the audience. So maybe we can just take a couple and then do as you said. Mm -hmm. um, there was a question early on from Amano who asks, uh, what makes you decide to choose between black and white versus color for a certain kind of shoot? Um, so that's- I, uh, Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, it's a good question. I think it's, it's just a matter of my own uh, feeling when I'm, in the field shooting, looking at the light and looking at the color. But in most cases, um, 
I decided to use the hand painted technique when the colors from the reality were not so interesting. Meaning, <laughs> meaning that like I had the opportunity to picture, uh, create, create photographs where the colors were, would not be the good one, but I knew that Drekuma would be there to do the <laughs> job. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Um, there's another question from Vasant, who says, great work and that they're a big fan. Um, did you have difficulty in explaining to the people, to those around you, what you were doing? How did they react to your treatment of the sacred Yamayana? Um, it was really fun working with, with, with the locals. I think I've rarely had like a um, misinterpretation or difficulties to to make them understand what I was doing uh, and the more I was traveling like the more I realized that all of them you know like they're the favorite characters or they knew really well the story um, in many pictures like people don't know this and I don't really want people to know it you know but they are Muslims uh, pictured, uh, they are uh, Christians pictures, you know, so it doesn't even matter sometimes uh, the, the religion uh, you follow, you know, like people still know the Ramayan. Uh, thank you. Um, if you do have any more questions, uh, we had a few about process, which I think Vasantha really spoke to me a moment ago. But if you do want to pose them directly, you can put your hand up using the raise your hand function and you can pose it directly to Vasantha or if you have any questions to Divya and Hannah, do please feel free. Um, maybe if you had a couple more points, Divya and Hannah, before we maybe move to a final question from the audience. Sure. Yeah, um, should we, is there a particular photograph you'd like to discuss? Yeah, well, why don't we, I mean, this is a stunning um, photograph and it's, you know, it's beautiful to, beautiful photograph taken in Dhanushkodi, which is, as Vasantha was saying right at the beginning, at the very tip of South India um, and, and near Rameshwaram. And it's um, the closest point from India to Sri Lanka. So it's, it's the place, as you were saying, where the bridge to Sri Lanka is born. But I think you were telling me that this really encapsulates the whole project for you um, for various reasons. So I, th I think that would be a nice way to to sort of look at, uh, you know, to, to, if you could talk about that for a little while. Yeah, of course. Um, I, I think one of the main questions when I started the project is that the, the Ramayana uh, is historically um, told from a man's perspective, you know, from Rama's perspective. Yeah. Uh, and, and from the start of the project, um, for the books we've uh, commissioned uh, Indian writers, uh, female Indian writers, to have a modern retelling of the Ramayana uh, through Sita's perspective. So in, in the series, um, she is the one um, looking, at, looking at things and, 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 and telling to, to the readers uh, the Ramayana. Uh, and, and, and that picture of Sita for me uh, is kind of encapsulate uh, the strength um, she have in the story. Um, yeah. The fact that although she's linked to Rama forever, they will never really be together again at the end of the story. It's not a happy ending, you know, like everyone um, think, think it's going to be her happy ending, but it's not, uh, very far from it. Um, and I think in terms of, of aesthetics uh, and, and the picture itself, um, it, it, it sounds staged and it looks staged, but it's not. Um, and it's perhaps a meticulous uh, observation of the fishermen working every morning, tire, tirelessly um, pulling the nets uh, from the sea. Uh, and I was going there every morning for, I think, two weeks. And only one picture is a good picture. And it's it's wow. <laughs> the picture we see now. And I mean, many times when I speak to young photographers, you know, like there is that, that uh, I think um, wrong 
feeling that photography is about trends and talent, but for me, it's a lot about dedication and, and time and going back and going back and going back and failing, failing, failing. And at one point, you know, like you will, you will do something that get per, per, perhaps it's a picture that, uh, that is going to last, you know, perhaps it's a picture in 10 years, you look at it and it's still a good picture. Now it's very much sort of, um, you know, like many of the images that we've seen works on its own, but with the context of, of, of what you've just said, and particularly with the empowerment of women as the, as the sort of ending point of, 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 of um, this story, it's, it's very striking for that reason. And as you say, it's not a happy ending. Sita um, eventually gets taken back into the earth from which she came. Yeah. Um, um, and it, it, and it's, it's, a, it's a powerful story um, for that, but I don't think we've actually got enough time to go through that story. Mm. But I think, yeah. Hannah, you should talk a little bit about afterlife because that was one of the ones that you were particularly taken by. Yeah. Um... I was very struck by the afterlife and in contrast to the rest of the series, you know, it, you have such a different approach to, to color as the, you know, first um, remark and a different, you know, a use of collage in this series. And, you know, there's so much movement and, you know, emphasis on the body. And I was wondering if you could, you know, just tell us a little bit of the narrative of, you know, around the afterlife and, why you chose such a different approach. Yeah, so the, the chapter six afterlife uh, is centered on the, the battle between Rama and Ravana. So Sita has been abducted by Ravana and Rama is going to Sri Lanka to try to, to win the war um, and, and get uh, Sita back home. Um, and I think it was the most challenging chapter to shoot because I knew that of course I was not going to witness any kind of uh, people fighting, you know, like, so how do you portray um, feelings like death and, and disorientation and, and sadness and darkness? Um, and I, I started shooting at night, uh, shooting with a flash, something I've never did before, um, with a small 35 millimeter camera. Um, and the pictures were all shot um, in a festival. Uh, the festival is Dashera. It happens uh, once a year in India. Um, and during the festival, it lasts for a week uh, and it celebrates the, the victory of good over evil. Um, and for seven nights, uh, people would go in a kind of trance, you know, they would like... Uh, them dress themselves uh, differently um, and my my feeling uh, like witnessing what was happening in front of me was to see mind and body uh, kind of disso dissociating from themselves you know and and it was like for a week you could like escape uh, who you are and become someone else and no one will really notice or no one will tell you how to, how to perform or how to, how, how to act. Um, and, and back in Paris after the festival, uh, I decided to use the collage technique to try and enhance that idea of, of battle, you know. So I was physically cutting up prints and elements within the prints that were interesting in order to mix them, mix them back together again. Um, so it, 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 was a, it was a really fun chapter to, to make after the previous one. Not so, not so much fun when I was in India because I was like oh, fully sick and, oh. and the festival was very short. So um, I had to go out and, and photograph anyway. So even myself, I have very vague memories <laughs> uh, of what happened. Um, and, and yeah, it was a very strange experience. And I think that the book is, um, the book is meant to be uh, a bit uns unsettling and, and disorienting. And it's, it's not meant to be a, a comfortable book, you know, like I, I, I'd like it to be disturbing. Yeah, as a, as a reader, I think you yeah. really, re you really feel that. I felt so taken with, 
the with the story of this chapter this it, is it only over the course of one night that this happened? no seven seven nights seven nights yeah. wow yeah there's such a a contrast with you know these very almost disturbing or sinister looking images and then moments of you know real tenderness you know and um yeah it's it's a really wonderful really really great chapter um, we have one final question from Vasant. Um, Vasant, I think you're unmuted if you wanted to pose it directly. Hi, Vasant, a big fan here from Baltimore. And uh, thank you on the panel for this wonderful presentation. Really enjoyed the stories beyond the pictures. My question is, uh, have you shown this work in India? And if you have, has the reaction to it, is it different from the reactions from people in the West, uh, and if you're not exhibited in India, would you like to do that? And what does that mean to you? I've never, I've never exhibited the work in India, uh, and I would very much like to 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 do it, of course. Um, and I think it will be read in in India very differently from the West, you know, because here, like so many people, they don't even know the, the story at first. So the, the story seems, um, I mean, in France, at least, like the story sounds uh, very complicated for people, you know, too, too many characters. Um, and, and, but it's a very interesting question, I think, because like the way we photographers make and, and create uh, images, uh, in the end, we have no power as of how they will be, be read by the audience, you know, and it's true that, um, an, ex an exhibition in London, in Paris, or in Mumbai uh, will be will be read very 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 differently. Uh, I think. Um, I I do hope to to show the project as a world one day one day in India. Uh, thank you for that, Vasant. Um, thank you. I think we are running out of time right now. Um, Vasantha, Divya, Hannah, do you have any final comments before we wrap up tonight? I'm just sorry that we couldn't go through more of the images. I just think there's such a fascinating a process in developing this narrative and um, the images themselves are just absolutely wonderful in, in, their, in, in many different layered ways. Um, we never even got to speak about this particular final image, you know, and, and the way the painting technique is different from the previous one. So there's so much more to be said. Um, uh, yeah, you know, thank you, Vasanta. <laughs> uh, will it be on display, um, you know, with the new acquisition from um, the Photographer's Gallery, will that be on display at the V&A at any point? Yes, we hope very soon. Certainly it will. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, Thank you, Vasantha, Divya, Hannah, for your insight for this evening. And hopefully there will be opportunity to see some of this work in person. If not, there are some images on TPG's website and I've circulated some links to both the show that's available online, that's on right now, and it closes in February. So hopefully again, there'll be opportunity to see that before it closes. Um, there's also Vasantha's book, Afterlife, and you can, I've circulated a link and there's also um, a voucher there if you wanted to take advantage of a limited edition, um, a limited time offer of 15%. And I know we didn't get to this video that Vasantha wanted to show us, so I've also circulated that. But it's um, for those of us, for those of you who are streaming or watching this on YouTube, it's on um, Vasantha's website and it's Afterlife. So you can access that there. And anyway, thank you all for joining us. Um, we really appreciate your ongoing commitment to the gallery and we really wouldn't be able to do what we do without you. So thank you. Um, thank you, Vasantha. Thank you, Divya. Thank you, Hannah. Um, if you have a moment this evening, we'd love to hear from you. We're doing a quick poll at the end of this to get some feedback. Anyway, I hope you're all okay and we'll hopefully see you again soon in the new year. Please keep checking our website for updates on forthcoming program or for information on how to visit the gallery tomorrow if you're in London and failing that, hopefully again in the new year. So thank you again and see you all very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.